All right, week eight college football breakdown here. Barn burner of a game, perhaps the game I'm looking forward to most uh, here on this week eight slate. We got Ole Miss, undefeated Ole Miss, top 10 Ole Miss, heading on the road to LSU, coming off that big win against Florida. LSU here, going up against the top 10 team. LSU's unranked. They're a two-point favorite at Tiger Stadium in this afternoon matchup and a pretty high total at 66 and a half. Um, I do have an official play on this game, and I just want to say that in I know in theory I'm not breaking the bank and I'm not you know breaking the space-time continuum by backing a top 10 team as an underdog on the road against an unranked team. And I get in theory that this might not be the best strategy long-term. I think LSU is a grossly overvalued football team. We've bet against them multiple times this year. We bet against them against Auburn. They were laying nine points at Auburn, and I know Auburn's bad. LSU is not that good either, all right? We bet Tennessee minus the three. Same thing, oh, in Tiger Stadium. Tennessee ain't going to be able to respond. They beat the brakes off of LSU. I don't have a vendetta against Brian Kelly. I think he inherited a bad short-term roster. I think this roster has clear limitations, even despite last week is in for perhaps a rough end of their season. I took the points here uh, with Ole Miss. I got it at two and a half. Uh, see that moved down a little bit to two. It's at two, two and a half, depending on where you look. I got obviously the best of the number. I think their offensive formula is sustainable. You know, contrary to popular belief, Ole Miss is a run first team that is elite in that category. They got Jedkins, who's emerged as a freshman. They've obviously got Zach Evans. Both those guys are over six yards of carry. Jackson Dart's actually been pretty good uh, in the run game as well. This is a run first team. Uh, Lane, Lane Kiffin has schemed up that run game nicely, and it really all starts up front. Ole Miss's offensive line has allowed two sacks this year. They might just be an elite unit uh, up front, and it really all starts on the ground with them. You know, a lot's going to be made that, you know, quarterback Jackson Dart, you know, first real road test of his career. I'm willing to concede that. Tiger Stadium's a tough place to play. I'm sure the environment will be great there. But LSU's defense, specifically their secondary, is not very good. Uh, clear as day. Um, they're still without two defensive starters that have been out for a while now. Seven banks uh, and major burns. You know, I haven't seen what I've needed to see to be able to fill the loss of both those guys. I mean, Auburn, a team that can't throw the ball against anybody, struck multiple times in the deep passing game on this LSU secondary. We saw what Tennessee did to them. The only hard part of this game for Jackson Dart is the environment. From an X's and O's football standpoint, this is a favorable matchup for this Ole Miss offense across the board. We're going to get a good effort from LSU's you know, front seven here, but still not up to the LSU. You know, People want LSU to be a certain kind of team. They're not there yet. We'll move it over, you know, to the LSU offense side of things. You know, that's really the area that I've been most critical of them. And with, with you know, it really all starts up front with their offensive line. Last week was the first time all season against a formidable opponent that, you know, they were able to win up front consistently, you know, against Mississippi State, against Auburn, against every other team they had played that was had a pulse, you know, defensively, their offensive line struggled mightily. You know, I'm not saying that they won't get better over time. Maybe that has more to say about Florida's defense than it does LSU's offensive line all of a sudden becoming really good because I, I still don't think they are. That's been the main reason we've faded them this season, and it's kind of another reason I'm fading them here. Jaden Daniels, you know, his effectiveness in the vertical passing game until last week was not good uh, against a power five formidable opponents. And it, listen, LSU broke out last week offensively. I'm not going to try to talk you off that. Teams are what they are for about eight, nine games of the season. One, two times a year, they're going to play well above you know, their capabilities and, and well above what we're going to see from them the rest of the year, and then vice versa. Teams are going to come out flat a few times each season. We saw LSU step up in a big way last week. It doesn't mean that all those concerns that we had seen consistently throughout the year are all of a sudden gone. You know, the running back, they're starting to walk on. Their receivers are talented. They're pretty inconsistent, though. I do think Ole Miss's defense is legit. They didn't look great last week against Auburn. I mean, they allowed far too many explosive plays in that game, and that's not encouraging. But once again, if you went up front against this LSU offensive line, which I clearly think Ole Miss can, the rest is going to take care of itself. Jaden Daniels is not going to be as effective in the vertical passing game as he needs to be for them to you know, keep up with this Ole Miss offense. A lot of people are, are not sold on Ole Miss because of who they played. You know, they've had a favorable schedule up you know, through seven games. I'll say this. If you use that logic with a team like Michigan, who is in a similar situation, you know, you, you've been losing money. I judge football teams. I judge matchups. And I think Ole Miss is plenty capable of going in there and winning this game. I don't have a vendetta against LSU. It's a bad short-term situation for Brian Kelly. I'm going to play against this LSU hype 
that people have created for him. Ole Miss plus two and a half uh, is a full one unit play for me. All right, guys, before we get out of here, I know you see this shirt right here. If you're in need of unique but comfortable uh, golf apparel, head over to Proud90.com. They got polos with the colder weather coming, hoodies and quarter zips. Recently added a ladies line. Proud 90 has got all your golf apparel needs. Browse their selection, and if you see anything you like at checkout, use code Fordham. It's going to get you 15% off your entire order. That's code Fordham. is going to get you 15% off your order at Proud90.com. Support me. Support Proud90 proud90.com